guys, in this video I've got to do a little bit of work on my little custom made mini grave digger project. If this is your first time seeing one of these little mini grave digger videos, I'm going to put a link up here to a playlist where I'm going to put all the videos, the build series and everything up there. So if you don't know what's going on, go and watch those videos first. But anyway, to quickly sum it all up, this was the first version that I built. And from what I learned from this one, I tried to improve the second one. So the second one, slightly longer wheelbase and also put in a brushless motor. The trouble is, it, I think it's the motor hasn't got enough power or it's over geared. I'm not really sure what's going on, but when you first start and drive it, it kind of stutters a little bit and then it goes. And this one here with a brushed motor, it's a little bit slow and the motor's not really designed for 2S LiPos. I'm running this on a 2S LiPo and the motor doesn't really last that long. So the idea with this was to give it a little bit more performance and also give it more reliability. So I've got a different speed control, I've got a different motor that I can try. And if that doesn't work, I may pinch the centre transmission out of this one here because it's lower geared. So here we've got the first version with the brushed motor, so we have front steering here, we have rear... Hmm. I thought we had rear steering, let's have a look at that. But anyway, we had, we had front and rear steer, at the moment it's only front, forward, back, <laughs> so you can see guys, it is a cool toy, but if it just had that little bit more power. <laughs> so here we've got the brushless one. So we've got the steering there. We've got the rear steer on the toggle switch. So that's working perfectly. Loads more power, but it takes a while to sort of kick in and work. Once it kicks in, it goes well. But look at that, it's really struggling. So it's got loads more power. I mean, if, it doesn't even need that much power, really. I just wanted to have a little bit more than the other one. Oh, <laughs> it's got more than enough power, guys. It doesn't need anywhere near as much. But it's just that cogging I need to solve. Look at that really tight turning circle. <laughs> it's got more than enough power. Will it backflip? Oh, oh, oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, it's not broken. Oh, yeah, it's broken actually. But you can get metal bits there. The bit that's broken there, look. So that part that's broken in there, you can actually get this in metal. So I got the UJ back on again, and luckily, if we have a little look over here on Banggood, they do some metal ones. So I'm going to order some of these up, and hopefully, that's going to make it stronger. All right, so next I'm going to install this motor and brushless speed controller. This one here is a much higher KV than this motor. So I'm guessing it's probably going to be worse, but I want to try it anyway. But I'm not going to film the whole entire process because if you want to see how these things are put together and how they're made, uh, then there's all those other videos that's in that link up here where you can see the whole process. So I'm just going to like film a few little bits and bobs, and then I'll put you back on when I've got something worth showing. All right, so I've got the motor out and I've just plugged it into a servo tester. So I'm gonna put a link to where you can buy one of these from down below. They are really are a handy piece of kit when you're testing electronics and stuff. So I've just got this ESC plugged into there, I've got the battery wired up. So now look. We can rev up the motor and we can make sure that everything works. Now the great thing is I can hold on to the pinion here and look, we can see it cogging. So what I'm gonna do now is play with some different motors, play with some different ESCs and just try them on here before I put them back in the truck because it's a bit fiddly getting the motor out and every time if I've got to put the motor in and out, in and out, in and out until I find the perfect combo, it's just going to be really fiddly. All right, so I've just got this motor here wired up and I've just had a quick play and it does feel a lot faster. And when I hold on to the pinion, it does cog, but not as bad. When it goes, this, this really burns my finger, whilst this one here didn't. So, maybe I will try this motor on that ESC next. Alright, so original motor, wired to the different ESC. It feels like it's definitely got more torque. It's not cogging as much, I think. I'm going to chuck it in and just see how it runs. Alright, there we go. Motor's all back in there. ESC's there, 
All the cables are kind of just sort of bodged in there, shoehorned in there for now. I just want to test it first, make sure it's all all right, and then we're going to tidy it up later on. All right. Front stair, rear stair. Oh, it's much better. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. It's still... Oh. I think it's just maybe way too fast. It doesn't need to be as fast. All right, let's see how fast it goes flat out. Yeah, definitely way too fast. Might try and gear it down a bit. Doesn't need to be that fast. I think if it was geared down, maybe it'd be more usable because it's just way too fast. Doesn't need to be that fast. Let's try it in here. Yeah, when you steer and go, it doesn't really kick in. Oh, it's cut out. Mm, turn it off and on. Oh, battery's out. So I'm going to steal the transmission out of this crawler here. It's a bit lower geared. So hopefully it's going to make this one a little bit less coggy. The only trouble is I don't really want to kill another crawler. I've killed enough crawlers already trying to build these. So I'm going to steal the gearbox out of this, and then if it works, I'll leave it in there and buy a new gearbox for this one. If it doesn't work, I'll take the gearbox back out and put it back. So I've got the transmission out, and I can instantly feel that it's much lower geared. Hey guys, this is going to work. All right, just run into a slight problem. So this gearbox casing here, out of the, um, what make is it? Out of the Hobby Plus, there's actually less room for the motor. In this one here, there's enough clearance on the gearbox to make room for the larger diameter motor. I mean, it's the same diameter, but the stock motor comes with a little flat spot. And that flat spot on this transmission kind of fits where the transmission is. Whilst if I try and put one of these size motors in, so this is the same size motor as that one, it, it doesn't fit into the gap. So one thing that I can do is raise the transmission up off the floor... So now there's room to get the actual motor in right there. So if we raise that transmission up off of the floor, we can actually get it in. But now the motor does not reach the spur gear. But luckily, the spur gear from the other transmission, if I put that onto there, it does fit. And also the mesh lines up. So maybe I'll try that. All right, so I've mounted this motor. The reason I've used this motor is because this one's already mounted on here. And this being geared lower, it's going to go a lot slower. This is a slightly higher KV motor. So I'm going to try it with this motor first. If it's way, way, way too fast, I can still put this motor back in it. And um, yeah, it's all in there. The only thing I've had to do is have a little space underneath the transmission. So for now, I'm just going to leave it like that to see how it works. I need to make another hole into the motor mount because there's only one screw holding the motor in for now. But I just want to test it first. I want to see if this is a good concept. Then if it works, then we're going to make it all nice. So I'm going to screw all this back up into here, and then we're going to put you back on and give it a little blast. All right, we're all mounted up. The only issue now is, is that this bottom plate is slightly different uh, suspension geometry wise. So now it's shifted the axles forward a little bit. Also, I can't really fully fit it because the, the motor's in the way here, look. On the Hobby Plus gearbox, the motor is sitting a lot lower. So I'm going to have to think about something there and these are gonna to have to be shortened to bring them in a bit so that's no big deal uh, but anyway let's see what it can do oh no cogging no cogging at all all right full lock oh look at that it goes straight away <laughs> All right, see how fast it can go. Do you know what? I think it's, it's not crazy fast, but... I think it might be enough. I mean, it might be a tiny, tiny bit on the slow side. Just a tiny bit. But, um, oh, look, dry shaft's falling out. But this ESC can take 3S LiPo. 
So maybe I can find a 3S LiPo to go in here. So I've just removed it again. I was gonna use the stock base plate, the base plate that came off of the RGT. The one that was on there to start with. But the trouble is with this one, I mean, all the four link bars line up nicer, but the trouble is that these holes are in a completely different place. And I could have re-drilled them, but it just didn't sit right. So I've used the stock uh, base plate that come out of the Hobby Plus. And if you look under there, look, I put a little spacer under one of the gearbox mounts, and then on the gearbox mount on this side, I shaved a little bit off. So what that's done now is tilted that whole transmission a little bit. Everything looks to sit pretty much perfectly, and I'm just gonna have to shorten these links to make up for this base plate being wider, but it should all be good. Boom, we're in. Everything back together again. I've shortened up all these links so that now there's plenty of dry shaft in there. I've got the wheelbase back to roughly where it was before. Suspension's all working. It all moves, so now let's give it a quick blast. Well, wow, definitely got the power now. Look at that. Oh! <laughs> Guys, I mean, maybe you could do with a tiny little bit more speed, but it's definitely so much more better than it was before. I mean, it's actually got some torque now. <laughs> I mean, it's probably even half crawlable. So it still crawls. I mean, these are not very grippy tyres. They're not very rubbery, really. They're quite plasticky. But I mean, for something that goes this quick and it still crawls, guys, I'm amazed. And it could do a tiny bit more speed, but we probably could find a slightly bigger pinion gear. And this ESC can run on a three cell LiPo. This is only a two cell LiPo. So I know we can definitely get more out of this if we want to. All right, so I've just been playing with it off of camera and I broke one of these plastic things on the drive shaft. That's the second one I've broken now, look. It just breaks off one of these little nipples on this little ball thingamajig there, look. But on Banggood, you can get some metal ones. So hopefully, that's going to make it more reliable. So there we go, guys. Everything back together again. I'm going to put a link down below to all the parts that I use to make this build. I'd be interested to see some of you guys build your own versions. Um, you can copy me and do exactly the same, or maybe you can build a better version or a different version. I'll be interested to see anything. So if you can make a video, comment down below, and I'll be sure to check out your version too. So the body and the chassis came off of one of these Spin Master Monster trucks here. This is the Monster Mutt version, obviously Monster Grave Digger version. And then I've got the wheels and the exhaust headers off of one of these Spin Master Monster trucks. There's going to be links to, down below to both of those cars. And then the front and rear axles, because I've got four-wheel steer, they came off of one of these HBX Devastators. And then the centre transmission and the cradle, that came out of one of these Hobby Plus crawlers here. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, Kev, it's a waste of a crawler. And yes... I do agree. So if you can source the parts separately and just build the transmission yourself without killing a complete model, that may well be the way to go. The speed controller and the motor combo is this Leopard Hobby brushless power system. And that is the motor and the speed controller. So there's gonna be a link to this setup down below. Servo wise, I'm using one of these Tower Pro MG90S servos, metal geared. Actually the servo saver, that came off of these Devastator servos here. That fitted straight on. The shocks are from a Devastator and I think the front ones, they're a little bit shorter and I actually pinched those ones off of this one here, the RGT. But you'd probably be able to use the shocks off for this or you could just use all four shocks from the Devastator. It's just on a real life ones, the trucks, the rear shocks have got slightly more travel than the front shocks and I just wanted to keep it a little bit more realistic. Radio wise, I'm using a Spectrum DX5C. There's a little micro receiver in there so I can have to rear steer on this toggle switch here so I can do that independently. Front steering here, rear steering on this toggle switch here. The battery I'm using is one of these from a K 
helicopter. One of these helicopters here. They come with an XT30 connector. So I soldered one of those onto the speed controller. But anywho, I'm going to put the original build of this truck up here. And obviously that's not as you see it like this because originally I had a different transmission in there. Uh, so you can follow that build to get sort of like the gist of it on this build. And then you can watch this video to kind of do like the modifications to build it like I have it here. But this is working absolutely perfectly now. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to build some more ramps wherever it's gone. There's one down there. I've, I've got some paint in here so I can paint it up in all that Monster Jam colours. I'm going to build some different ramps. And I'm also going to build up these monster trucks here so I can have a little fleet of them. I'm going to do these ones slightly differently. I'm, I'm going to do these a little bit more of a budget build. So I'm going to be using only one servo on the front and I'm going to be using the axles that I've got left over from some of these cars here. And by the way, I may well do another video doing doing another complete build with one of these if anybody's interested so I can do it step by step because now that I've done it now I know exactly how to build another one the same and I really want to build one like Overkill Evolution if you check out Mike from V2 Vids I'm going to put a link to his channel down below I would love to build a replica of his truck but um, it's getting hold of the body that's going to be a little bit tricky but anyway there's going to be another video where I'm going to set up a little freestyle track that's going to come up very soon I'm going to build them other trucks maybe I'll film them maybe I won't um, give me a note in the comments if you want to see it. If enough people want me to, to document the build, then I will. I don't want to bore you guys by doing too many of these little mini sort of monster truck builds. But anyway, guys, check out one of these other videos.